In this video, we're going to look at some of the pros and cons of a multi-choice field and when I think you should use them and when you should use a connected table. In the pets table, we have a few multi-choice fields. And in my view, a multi-choice field should really be used when the uh, options are either static, in other words, they don't change very often, such as north, south, east, west, or where they're just yes, no options. So for instance here, with the uh, sex of the dog, we have two options, male and female. And it's very unlikely in the dog world that that's likely that's going to change. Um, with a muzzle, it starts to get slightly more complex. Obviously, we can have a yes, no, or possibly unknown. So that's still fine in a multi-choice field. Those options aren't really going to change. We then start getting into other fields, which I call like behavior. So this could be a field that you want to add other options to. Uh, you may want to sort to find options in this list. And I would probably be nervous around, about doing this because from a builder's point of view, my client may decide they want to keep adding or retiring those options. Certainly when we look at this uh, field here called multi-choice uh, for breed, um, this is an absolute no-no as far as I'm concerned. I would never advocate doing this. So this is a list of dog breeds and as you can see, it's probably got about a hundred in it. Um, that would be very difficult to manage uh, and, and update. And uh, I'll show you some reasons why. So I'm just gonna switch over to pages. So it's actually on this form called add pet. And I've put the uh, field on here. This is the uh, breed multi-choice field. And if I show you what that looks like in the live app, if I add a pet here, this is my field. So first of all, um, I can't type to reduce that list down. So if I was looking for all dogs that were a terrier, I can start to type T, but it would just jump me down to the list where the T's are. Um, if I then type E, it jumps me back to the beginning of the E's. So I can't filter this list, which is one of the issues. So finding things in a drop down list that's a hundred lines becomes much more difficult. So I'd need to kind of eyeball this. And if I was looking for a, there you go, Parsons Russell Terrier, that's the one I can select. Some other issues that you may have if you're using a multi-choice field for such long lists like breeds is I've got a, an obvious spelling mistake here for Afghan, Afghan Hound, but it's been noticed after we've created the list. So if I go into the fields view and into that field, I can see here that that's been spelled incorrectly. So um, it should be Afghan with a H. So I save that. And if I then scroll all the way to the bottom and update that, if I now go back to my records view, that hasn't changed. It won't update. So I need to click into that field. And as you can see, that spelling of Afghan no longer exists. So it's no longer an option in that multi-choice field. I'd now, to, now need to reselect it for that to be updated correctly. And I would have to go through and do that um, on each record in my database, which may require me doing an update. Obviously I can update them all here, but it's obviously another thing I'd need to worry about from a developer's point of view. Uh, another issue uh, with using this type of process is that if, for instance, this Afghan hound uh, wanted to be retired from that list, um, as a builder, I'd need to go into the uh, table, into the multi-choice field, and I would need to remove that item and come down to the bottom of the list and save. So now in the live app, if I just do a refresh, if I add a pet now, that's no longer an option. But that once again would need to be done in the builder. So if your application is mainly being used by front end users, they have no way of retiring that or archiving that record themselves. So a better way to do this is to have a separate table. So here I have a table called breed and it's just a short text field for the breed name. There's a link to a website for more information and then a multi-choice field for archive. And I use this method quite a lot. So the multi-choice field is just yes, no, and its default is set to no. So all records are not archived. If I show you the table, so this is exactly the same list. The breed is here. And obviously now I can have other information related to it. So links to websites and other, other columns. Uh, but the important things are that this is a separate table and I can manage its status of whether it's active or archived by toggling yes to no and back. So what we do is on the pets table, if I go into the fields view, is we add a connection. Uh, I already have it here, breed, 
connected category, but you can add a connection and then select breed as your connected table. That will then show up as this does here. And then if I go to records, I can click on the list here and I have all of my items in this list. Uh, differences here, even in the builder, I can now start to query that table and type terrier and it will just give me all the, uh, all the results that have the word terrier in it. So that will work the same when I put that into my live app. So if I go to pages and open this form, I'm just going to delete the multi-choice version. And here is the connected one. So I'm just going to drop that on there and save and then refresh. So now if I add a pet from here, this is now looking at the related table. So now once again, I can type Terrier and it will highlight all of the entries. So it's much easier to find what I'm looking for. So for instance, here is the one I was after and that's it, that's done. And I can then submit and save that record. Because the breeds are in a separate table and we've got this archive, yes, no field, I can archive things uh, in the builder and also the live app. So for instance, with the Afghan Hound, if I wanted to archive that, I can set to, that to yes. What I need to do is uh, then change on that page uh, where the field is, click onto that field and I can put a filter onto here. And this is looking at the same table. So I can say only show items in this drop down box that uh, is no. So it will only show those records equal to no. So we've filtered out Afghan Hound. So if I just refresh, add my pet now and it was at the top it's now been removed from this drop down list which means i can easily bring it back i don't actually have to delete it i can just effectively filter it out and hide it so another reason for having this as a separate table is if you change the description here so i'm going to take the g back out of afghan and save that it will update all of the records in the related pet table so now this is my connected category and as you can see it's updated that and removed that and that would happen across every entry. So I don't have to then go through and do an update. So now that you've created the related table in the pages view, I'd like to give the end user or the admin user the ability to be able to manage these categories. So I've got an admin page here, which is secured by a login and the login is just for admin. And then on this, I've put a table, which is just showing the breeds. And then I'm using uh, two action link buttons here, one to archive and one to restore. So in the live app, if I go to admin, you'll see here, this is my list and there's 118 items in it. I've also set up a filter here, which shows me active and archived. Because I previously archived the Afghan hound, that's here and I could easily restore that back in. So that will now go back into the list and that will then be available as an option. So coming back to my breeds, if I add a pet here, this is the related table and Afghan, because it's spelled incorrectly, is back in the list. So from my end user, I can still go into my admin section and here I can edit this. So I'm just going to click on, I've got inline editing on. So I'm just going to right click and uh, pick up the spell checker. And that's now spelled correctly. So back to my pets, add a pet. And now that's correct in this drop down list. So it makes it nice and easy for an admin user to be able to first of all edit um, items in a related table uh, to be able to archive them so they no longer appear in the drop down list because you're changing it from no to yes so it's archived and also then to be able to add a breed as well um, this is set as mandatory and unique so they can't put the same one in but then you can control who's put in these categories in it doesn't have to always be you as a builder so I hope you found this useful talking about multi-choice and related tables and the differences between the two and I uh, hope you can put it into practice. Happy building.